Okay, welcome back. Um, now I'm just going to have a look at the 2013 question and I'm going to look at part of just half of the May entry because we haven't seen something like this come up before so I just want to go through it very briefly. Um, and in order to do that I've just done a kind of a mini part of the tabular statement where I've shown some of the assets and liabilities the value they were at the very start of the year. I've got the May entry and the 2nd December column that we usually use as well and then the final totals column because I'll need a little bit of all of those anyway to get this done. So uh, first of all let's look at the bit I'm going to do. So it's May 2013. Received a bank statement on May 31st showing a direct debit of 8400 to cover advertising for the year ended this and a credit transfer received of that to cover 11 months rent receivable. So I'm not going to do the rent receivable because that is similar to previous years. This is different, the first one. Received a bank statement showing a direct debit of 8400 to cover advertising for the year ended that. Okay, so in some parts it's similar to what we've done, but in one particular part it's very different. So let's start with the easy one first of all. Uh, it was showing a direct debit of 8400 your bank statement. A direct debit means that you were paying money out of your account, so your bank is going to go down by 8400 So over to this. First of all, bank down by 8400 straightforward enough and then what I always say is that we need to decide what else do we need to put in and where do we need to put it in to balance out that 8400 so I'll have the same total above and below no total below uh, so here's the thing though in all of the past ones if we look at the date that we've done so far it says direct debit 8400 cover advertising for the year ended 31st of the 8th 2012 in every question we've done previously it was to cover advertising that we would be uh, paying for up until sometime next year in other words we were prepaying for advertising by the end of the year and if we look at here this is 31st of the 8th 2012 well our tabular statement is for the year 2012 so this advertising is not paying for anything i suppose in 2013 so we're not prepaying for advertising next year with this payment so that's where it's different for a start so when you look at these dates always when we saw that it was going to end up being a prepayment of an expense we looked for something up in the assets if it didn't exist we would have put in advertising prepaid up here in the assets but since at the end of the year we aren't going to have any advertising prepaid now we should know that it's going to be down here and in fact it's going to be expenses due and i'll explain why in a moment so if we first of all it's to cover advertising for the year ended that's the important thing is for a whole year okay and then also the second thing is that the year ends on the 31st of August 2012 it's now May 2012 so you are paying for a year's worth of August I'm worried we're a year's worth of advertising excuse me um, and the year is ending in August 2012 well that means that the year of advertising must have started in August 2011 so it means that you were receiving advertising every month since August 2011 right up until May and you're going to get more right up until the end of August uh, 2012 but you're only paying for all that advertising in May 2012 which means that at the start of this tabular statement which starts on the 1st of the 1st 1st of January 2012 you had already received a fair amount of advertising you had received if I use my fingers again if it started in August 2011 well the last day of August 2011 you'd received advertising for uh, September October November and December 2011 four months worth of advertising before the start of this year even began um, and also you hadn't paid for it because we know you're not going to pay for it until May 2012 so if you had received it and you hadn't paid for it, that means that's an expense which is due to be paid, an expense that you owe for. So what we're saying is in this expenses due figure here of 4,200, that includes that advertising that you received. Uh, and the amount that it includes, if we work it out here and just get my calculator out, well, if this 8,400 here was for a year's advertising, 8,400, well, then if we divide it by 12, we get one month's worth of advertising. Uh, 
And then if we multiply it by um, four, because we worked out that it was four months of advertising you'd receive between August and December, or between September and December, if you like, um, of 2011. Uh, or four months that you'd received up until the start of 2012, up until this date, it means that you'd received 2,800, excuse me, 2,800 worth of advertising and you hadn't paid for it. So that 2,800 must be included in this expenses due figure. So I'm just going to write down that 2,800 over here for a second uh, because we'll be using it later on. Okay, so... The next thing is we've worked out that it should be in, ex in the expenses due. Uh, all we need to do then is put some figure in here to make this total for now because it's a bit of a fudge and we'll fix it up in the 2nd December column. So if it's going to go down there, that means there's nothing else going up here. So I can total that 8,400. Well, the only thing I can put in here to make that balance is another minus 8,400. Okay, so if I had a total here, which I should have, that would be minus 8,400. Now remember, this is no, this is only part of the May. I'm not doing the other part of the May. Okay, so the next thing is 2nd December column and the total column. Here's what we do. We do the same as we did before. We work backwards from the total column uh, to the 2nd December column. So at the end of the year, 31st of December, we are going to have some amount in here for expenses due. OK, at the start of the year, we had 4,200 worth of expenses due. At the end of the year, we're going to have less than that because this included that advertising that we owed. But we paid that advertising in May, so it should no longer include that advertising that we owed. So what we're going to do is subtract this 2,800 from this 4,200 and our total expenses due is going to be 1,400. OK. All the rest of the expenses due at the start of the year, we assume you just still haven't paid them and they're still outstanding and you owe them. So that's why you still have the 1400 in here. And so then all you have to do to find out what should be in here is just add these up and come up with a figure here that makes the three of these together add up to 1400. So let's just get our calculator out again. We've got at the start a plus 4200. Then we've got a minus 8400. And so if I put the two of them together, so far we've got a minus, oh, I put in the wrong, excuse me there, that should be 8,400. So far you've got a minus 4,200, but you want it to be a plus 1,400. So in order, what do I need to add on to this to bring it up to a plus 1,400? Well, if I add 4,200 onto it, it makes it zero, doesn't it? Because minus 4,2 and plus 4,2 cancel each other out, give us zero. So I must add 4,200 just to get back to zero. And then another 1,400 to get up as far as 1,400. So really, what I need in there is 4,200 plus 1,400, which is 5,600. That's what I should put in the December column. And of course, as always, um, whatever I put in there, uh, to get this all balancing, I need to put the a similar figure in the profit and loss figure to make sure that I uh, have my totals remain the same. So if I'm putting something in here, that means this total up here is just going to be zero or zip. So what do I do here or put in the profit and loss to make sure I have the same total down here? It has to be a minus 5,600. 